Saitama at Toda Station. This is our old stomping ground. Back in the day we used to live in Saitama, but now it's the sticks to us because we live in Tokyo. So we're out in the sticks and we've come here for a special event, but we're at the station right now and we've seen this amazing piece of art behind me. I guess it, maybe it's not amazing, but it's really cool and collaborative with the people who are walking through. Uh, you can see that they have like a grid down at the bottom that shows where bottle caps are supposed to go in this little grid system that they've made out of what looks like the stuff that used to kill ducks. You used to put the top of the... <laughs> You'll just have to look at it. These little circles. This is what used to kill the ducks. You remember you used to get the six pack and then you'd find the duck and the duck would be very unhappy because it was wearing that thing. I don't know what those are called. They didn't have a name. They were the things that killed the ducks and you had to cut them like your mom always made you cut them. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone on about that. Anywho, I've got a bottle cap. And uh, we used the grid. It took us a very long time to figure out where we were going to put the orange, but we've chosen 17 and 20. So 17 across, and then you're gonna go 20 down. <laughs> and 16, no, we go, I think we're doing 16. Yeah, we're doing, yeah, 16. We're doing 16 and 20. <laughs> and you just pop it in, and now that, you're part of art. That was a really good click. I'm an artist. Did you feel that click? That was click it a good was click? was great. <laughs> that duck would be dead. <laughs> we're at the Toda Boat Race Course, and that sounds amazing, because I love boats. And I basically love anything that you could bet money on. Yeah. Um, it's just fast little boats with jockeys. Do you call them jockeys? Yeah, boat jockeys. Yeah, boat I think so. Jockeys. Oh, God, I want to be a boat jockey. Um, they're just rolling around and racing each other. Uh, we have some things to learn about this way of racing, so we're not professionals on the topic. But at the very least, it is very similar to pony racing in the there's betting and there are colors and the way that you bet and there's just water there's a lot of water <laughs> and I'm crying uh, we're gonna watch a couple of races try to understand do some betting and enjoy our time in the sticks here in Toda look at all that data after going to the pony races I have a feeling that the caliber of restaurant and eateries here is going to be pretty low. Just, well, did you like the food it. at the pony race? It, it was plentiful. There were a lot of different things to eat there. I mean, we had pizza law or something like that. There's no pizza law here. You are in the sticks. Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what we are forced to choose from. This is Brazil, they just do coffee. Um, but as you can see, it uh, doesn't look that great. <laughs> Katie was right, the food choices are pretty dismal. So we went and we looked at this little restaurant and it was just, didn't look appealing and it was more expensive than a crummy little food stand we found. So we went with, of the two crummy places, the crummy little food stand. And um, I got a yakisoba because it was kind of the only thing that was meal-esque to me. And um, yakisoba is just fried noodles with sauce and stuff. It's Benny really, shoga. Yeah, Benny shoga. Yeah, the Benny shoga sells it. Um, I'm a little sad there's not mayonnaise in here. Um, that saves bad yakisoba sometimes. Um, I don't. <laughs> I'm not expecting a whole lot here. <laughs> it was warm, which was surprising to me. <laughs> it's okay. It was cheap. 300 yen, so like two and a half bucks or whatever. So, it's not exciting though, like, you know, went to the horse races, wanted to eat some horse, didn't get any horse, came to the boat races. You're going to eat a boat? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> what exactly would you tie into this that would make, I guess it should be seafood or something, shouldn't it, since it's like water related activities? But um, you got stuff that wasn't seafood as well. There wasn't much seafood at the... They're probably there, there not like keeping a, the food standards up high enough for seafood, dude. There was a squid, like, cartoon. 
Yeah, there was a squid cartoon. I did not get that. I've gone with a egg salad sandwich and Yanadi Zushi, which is just a soybean, a soybean pocket. They've just formed it into a pocket, like a deep fried type tofu type thing. Um, They're usually a little bit sweet, right? Yeah. And then there's rice on the inside. And that was the best thing on the menu to me. I think you might have been right. I think you made the right decision. I'm interested it's tasty. to. I'm interested to see you dig into this. This guy here. <laughs> Is it just egg salad or? I'm assuming it's just egg salad. Did they hide something inside? It's an egg salad hoagie. We're all gone. It looks okay, I guess. Yeah, it's good. It was cheap, wasn't it? Like 100 yen or 150 yen or something? 180. On the rare occasion that I turn on the television, I tend to see these little boat races. <laughs> I guess this is like kind of a big deal in the area. Um, I'm not sure, do boat races like this happen outside of Japan or is this a Japanese thing? So they're basically these tiny little go-karts in the water with these really powerful little engines that push the boat along so fast that it like keeps the boat up out of the water a majority of the time. It like skips across the water when they're at full speed. And the dudes racing the boats are using their body weight. Like the boat is so small that like the, the boat jockey's weight is being used to corner and like adjust like where things are gonna go with the boat and the direction it's gonna go. And it's like they're steering with their weight basically. And um, the jockeys are also like crouching down in the boat for like aerodynamic reasons, you know, to like help them go faster when they're on the straightaways and things. <laughs> It's really quite an exciting little race to see. And I'm surprised because it seems pretty popular. This is not like we went to the Japanese Derby and that was like, there's a ton of people there, like record breaking numbers of people. And this place isn't packed or anything, but it's a huge facility. And there's quite a few people here betting on this, on these races and stuff. The atmosphere is a little different here too. Like we were talking about like, how do we say that this has got a trashier atmosphere than the pony races without actually saying that? But the people here are, let's just say, a little rough around the edges. <laughs> Alright, so I found a vending machine a few minutes ago and it had a drink in it that I'd never seen before. Um, and I thought I would buy it and then see what Katie thinks of it. And she has no idea what it is and um, she's going to do like a blind taste test. And it is, it's pretty... <laughs> I haven't tasted it yet either. I'm not really that excited about it. It's like ginger and apple and vinegar and like black sugar. And it just looks, I don't know, man. We're gonna, I'm, thinking, I'm guessing it's gonna be like a funky apple apple juice, but uh, we'll, let, we'll let Katie tell us. So she's over here and she's got her, she's got her ears plugged and her eyes shut. <laughs> and uh, okay, ears down, eyes closed still. Yeah. Ears down. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so put your hands up. And you get a cup situation, and then there's a straw on the top, okay? Alright, and just give that a taste. Don't sniff it, just taste it. Just go straight in. Yeah, no sniffing first. Is it terrible? No. Oh, really? Tastes like a weird alcohol. There's no booze in there, as far as I know. <laughs> like a fruit punch alcohol. <laughs> you can smell it now if you want. I wanted to see if you can tell me any of the ingredients. Is there a picture on the front? Yes, there is. You can't look. Kiwi? Kiwi? <laughs> Did you say kiwi? Yeah. I've had this before. Yeah, the beats just got jamming in here. Have you heard this? Yeah, it's like it actually burns the back, like the top of my mouth. Like behind, you do, you know, like at the front of your mouth, it's hard at the top, and then you go back and it gets soft and yeah. you can push on it. It burns that. <laughs> Why is it burning that? <laughs> oh, I've had this before. If you give up, you can look. It's alright. 
I would it's almost funny say it's see. like non-alcoholic sake. Oh, weird. <laughs> okay, I definitely would have said that it came out of one of these. <laughs> <laughs> like a cauldron? Why well, keep doing with those? You've been testing me with apple stuff. I really like apples, but I apparently can never guess apples. Ah, uh, sugar. That's what burns. Yeah. And then it's um, like black vinegar and sugar. Yep, that's weird. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, I can definitely taste the vinegar now. Would not buy it again. Where we are in Saitama is right next to the Arakawa River. And I always assumed that these boat races were in that river, but it actually turns out there's like a man-made canal that they have kind of built. I don't even know if it's a canal. It's like a, a narrow lake. <laughs> a canal to me has a purpose of like moving water from one place to another. I think this is just like this man-made <laughs> narrow lake that they built. And the boats run like, there's like a, a, a loop basically they're going on. So it's kind of like a horse race. And they run maybe 200 or 300 meters or something down one way, make a turn, and then come back down. And they make like three or four laps, I guess. It's, it's what, 1,800 meters. It's one direction down? No, no, no. All together oh, for whole, an entire race. The whole race is 1,800 meters? Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's, that's nearly two kilometers. That's pretty far. And it seems it happens the whole race is like one minute. <laughs> it's like, it happens pretty quickly, but they go around like uh, maybe three and a half times or something like that. But it's, it's cool because you can see, because they made it like that circular way, the corners are exciting. Everybody like gets all like hooped up and hollering and stuff during the corners. And you can also like observe the entire race pretty easily. Um, I felt like sometimes at horse races, like the, the, the distance gets so far away, it's hard to like keep track like where your pony is and all that. But here, you can see even on the far end of the race course, you can see your dude going around the corner at the other end. So I think that keeps like everybody kind of excited. I think we all knew I was going to do some betting because I can't really resist. I'm not a gambler, but I like gambling. Um, we're just going to do some really cheap bets, nothing like insane. I'm not dropping a lot of moolah here at the, uh, at the boat race. Um, the betting is a lot like the pony races. Uh, the forms are very easy to understand if you have the PDF from the pony races, which I've been using, so I now understand how to use these. Um, we're gonna do some betting. I've been doing a trifecta, which is where you decide first, second, and third, and it has the highest payout if you're lucky. Um, Eric's probably gonna go for just the one man might win this. He's been going white today. So uh, they also have all these colored pencils and the colored pencils actually tell you who the person is interested in and um, or like driver. Well, it's not pilot. a color. It's a regular pencil. Just it's a color. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like a colored pencil in the sense of like you yeah, can true, do true. some it's coloring. A, you still need a regular pencil. Anywho, these correspond with the racers. The, all the racers have different colors. As uh, first is uh, the number one racer is white. Number two is black, and so on and so forth. And it's always the same each time. Uh, six is always green. Uh, so you can pick your color, or you can actually look at the stats, which. Good luck understanding the stats. Don't understand the stats. Understand the colors. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna do maybe like a hundred yen so on are you just going, our gut instinct. Are you just going based on color again? I've been going based on number. I've just been doing three, five, four. So three to win, two for or three to win, five to be second place, and four for third place. Okay. Yeah, that's, those are my lucky numbers today. I'm sticking with white. And you're sticking with white. I think I'm gonna go um, on a yellow for uh, a, a one man, yeah, okay. a one man winner. So All right. let me get to scribbling in these forms. Okay, so you're gonna need money. Stuff the money into the green area. Now it wants to eat your thoughts. You just put two of them in there at the same yeah, time. You can put up to twenty. Wow. And then you press the red button if you're finished. You jump on it. 
<laughs> and it gives you this little ticket. And this is all of our. Oh, okay. So there's two tickets. Which one's mine? This this is yours and mine. So this is saying that white is going to win, and this one is saying that yellow is going to win. So they just printed on the same card. Uh, and this is my trifecta that says I think three, five, four will be first, second, and third place. Right. Team white, son. Good luck. Before the races, all the boat jockeys come out, and it's cool because they're all like in jackets with their, you know, specific color that's tied to them and everything. And they go out in front of the boats, and they all bow together, and um, then they seem to each have like their own little routine. They're like stretching their legs, or jumping up and down, and like, you know, breaking it out a little bit, loosening up those muscles, <laughs> so they can get ready for their somewhat like, like when you think of like racing, I d you think of like, I mean, it's certainly a sport, and like I. You think of like race cars and like those guys are like fit like hardcore but like when i'm thinking of like f1 racing and stuff you know they're not using their body weight and stuff to move the vehicle around not to my knowledge anyways <laughs> and um this is like a pretty like you're a big part of the machine and um like i guess you gotta like you know you gotta loosen those muscles so you don't hurt yourself you don't want to like pull your neck or something like trying to throw a boat around the corner hit a wave wrong and i'm sure the accidents happen sometimes so Get me prepared. I got my white pencil out for good luck. There he goes, first place so far. First place, y'all. That's why I went with number one. <laughs> I just assumed that would probably be the best way to go with first place. Um, so I bet 100 yen, which is like less than a dollar. And we're not clear exactly how much money we're about to get back, but I think not much. <laughs> so I guess we put it in there. And, ooh. I guess pay out. I got my 100 yen back. <laughs> how do you bet for something and get back exactly what you put into it? <laughs> Where are my odds that shit? <laughs> Let's go bet again. We got here a little late today. I think at like maybe the sixth race of 12 of the day or something like that is when we got here. And um, it's now going into the 12th race. It's the last one. And I've decided I'm going to look at this a little bit and try to dissect it and to make a different choice. And I'm not going to go with white this time. Um, it was fun, but it didn't pay out enough. <laughs> so I think if I want to get rich, I'm going to have to change my strategy. Um, so I've decided to go with the, um, the racer that is from Tokyo. And um, just because, you know, it's my hometown at the moment. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, and of, of note, it looks like I'm checking. Nope, this race and race number 10 were female racers. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, this is a really cool hobby for a chick to have. Like, I don't know, that's like girlfriend material right there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I would be racing. You give me a boat, I will race it. Kind of interestingly, they've got this guy that is um, in the betting hall, like in front of the machines and stuff where you fill out your forms and everything. And he's like the boat expert or something. <laughs> and he's giving people advice like, oh, on this last race, this race will do this and that and this. And then he's got this like board and he's moving the boats around the board. Like at the starting position, they'll be like this and here. And like, he's talking about like body weight and like um, race history and all this stuff to help people like come up with like, a, I guess like a plan of like who they're gonna vote for. And like, I'm just going by where they're from. <laughs> While it is getting colder outside, we have opted to come in to this lovely enclosed area with tons of seats and it seems like the crowds have kind of dispersed so we've got a seat right in the front and as you saw from the sign that Eric panned down from, there's no smoking in here and that is actually lovely because as Eric was saying, the caliber of the clientele here is uh, on the rough edges, most of them smoke, I would say like 200% of them smoke and uh, yeah it has been a uh, I think that I have smoked about three cigarettes since I've been here and I didn't light one of them <laughs> got my lucky pencil remember this time I voted black guess who's in first place there she goes <laughs> I think I won again so Eric won 
many times today and I won none. So he's letting me put the slip and collect the money. I how feel much, good. How much did we win this time? I think we won 350 yen. So you essentially bet on what, last time, you bet on what everybody thought was going to win. And there was so much, yeah, that guy's definitely going to win that it didn't matter. We're rich! Yep, three <laughs> fitty! <laughs> Woo! this I was like how can I figure out how to get into this <laughs> how do you become a boat jockey you're gonna be a boat jockey I think I'm too big yeah I don't know our boat jockey I'll be a boat jockey <laughs> am I too big it's probably on the line <laughs> yeah anywho yeah boats are amazing and if you want to share this with your friends you can always go down and hit the like button and subscribe and you can also get more involved over at patreon and help contribute to making amazing videos with us and facebook twitter reddit yep we have those things as well <laughs> all that should be in the description of the video yeah so that should be um, easy to find um and jump into some questions yeah okay um the first question is from roby i guess r-h-o-b-e -E. So we're and, just gonna start spelling them now? Yeah, sometimes I'm gonna have to do that. Um, Ruby asks, uh, mentions that a lot of our videos have been in Southeast Asia, which is true, and wants to know where did you enjoy the most and where would you consider living in? And this is like one of the hardest questions anybody asks us, like what country did you like the best? So this, every country is so vastly different and has good things and sometimes bad things. And it's like, how do you compare all these places, even places in the same region? Like in my mind, my memory of like, Thailand and Cambodia, like they're right next to each other, but like incredibly different places. Yeah. And like Laos is a completely different place, and Myanmar is even more different than all those other ones. Like it's really difficult to compare them all. Um, but to live in Thailand is really high on the list. Um, I think it would be easy to live there. There's a lot of different things to do because the climate changes so much from the northern part to the southern part. There's beaches and mountains and the food is we, exciting. We've always and... called like a uh, Thailand traveling 101. Yeah. Like we, we feel like a beginner could really enjoy it and we also feel like a very experienced traveler could, could enjoy it. Like there's just off, you, so much. Yeah, there's a really well beaten travel path for people that are new to traveling and you also can just do whatever the crap you want you can, get, you can get off the beaten path if you want let's yeah. put it that way um, but even living there I think because Bangkok is a fairly modern city like it's very modern it would be easy to live to, to be able to have access to that would be really nice I don't know if I could live in a country like Myanmar or something long term you said Myanmar and that was the place that I wanted to go to I don't know if it was necessarily that I want to live, live there, there but it's, I mean, they have big cities, but it's not a modern city by any leap or bound. And I think that having access to a modern city is very cool. Like, it'd be cool to live in the countryside, but just being able to go into Bangkok sometimes and get, like, access to modern things, I think I have a hard time having lived in Tokyo now. And removing that from my mind now, it just seems like, whoa, I don't know if I could do that. I lost my cell phone, so I've been less modern today. <laughs> we're going to go find it. We're going to go find it, yeah. I keep thinking like, oh, I gotta check. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I think Singapore could be a livable place, um, but I think it, I, I think it might get boring to live there. But that's just sort of an assumption. It'd be very easy to live there, I think. I think. But this is coming from people that have only been in these places for like weeks or months at a time. So, yeah, based on our experiences. Yeah. Is that about? Yeah. Do you agree with me? If I disagree, I'd tell you. <laughs> <laughs> My bot shut off. Hold on a second. I gotta turn it back on. All right. Next question is from. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I need to do something to then, jazz it up. Your next uh, question is from Kwachi. What's top of your would love to do in Japan list? Ooh, I Maybe have a new thing on my list. A place to visit or an activity that's hard to do because of time, financial, rarity reasons, or whatever. Okay, that has nothing to do with any of those, but I did find out something that's on my list of want to do in Japan. I want to make my own chopsticks. Like, start from like a block of wood and 
make my own chopsticks somehow. And I, I was talking can you do to that? I don't know. I talked to the people at my work, like my Japanese friends, and they were like, they've got, they've got to be doing that somewhere. So, yeah, um, I'll, yeah. I'll Google that. Yeah, I, that, that's on my like Japan do list for activities. Places to go. I don't have any place specifically on the top of my head that I could list, but there's a lot of little islands, like small islands off the coast of Japan that usually require a ferry to get to. There's a whole lot of those that I just like, I feel like they're, I want to go there because I can't like easily go there. Like you go um, like to Okinawa and then you can go off the southern coast mm. and take ferries down to these places. And it's pretty expensive to just to get to Okinawa and then to get to these little islands and stuff. To go explore those places, I think would be really, really cool. Um, Gotta get a boat. Yeah, but we need a boat. One of those little boats. You get two of those little jet boats. <laughs> I'll just hold on to you really tightly. <laughs> One of those little jet boats? Yeah. <laughs> um, Food-wise, what I would like to do is to have like the top-notch unagi. Uh, I really want to do eel. that. Eel. Um, but it is it is very expensive, and I eat most of my meals with a guy that is not going to stomach unagi. That's me. Yeah, so or um, expensive. I'm not. Or expensive. expensive. Yeah. So <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I will in the future at some point drop four thousand yen on a meal, and that's not even that's not even high priced eel. Okay, that's like Katie's <laughs> top price on eel. It's like just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I don't know about food. I can hear some music. I don't know if the camera can hear it, but it's going like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have an answer for that. Well, so. I answered it, so yeah. let's answer another question. Um, the Kathy Fication. That's an awesome, That's awesome. awesome <laughs> username. I, or real name. It could be her real name. I don't know. Um, uh, asks you specifically, how many days off do you get per year? I understand it's mainly three-day weekends. Do you ever get a week? What about when you guys are te were teaching? Okay, wow. So I've been through a lot of different situations for holiday. And um, when you're teaching, you mainly get the same holidays as all of the students. So you'll get a large summer, you'll get a Christmas break, and that's great for a while until you realize that that makes it so you don't really have a vacation. You're stuck with all the other people doing the amusing things when everybody else has time. And yeah, if you want to go to Disneyland. And <laughs> getting out of the country ends up costing you so much because you're in it with everyone else that that's the only time they have. So yeah. it's kind of a bummer. And that's all teaching jobs make. However, it was nice. I mean, when, you, when we were teaching, you get like August off. Yeah. Like a month, you know? And then in, in December, you got three weeks off or something. You get quite a bit of time off compared to most people in Japan and that was nice but just as a side note a lot of teachers don't get paid their full you remember that you yeah get, you, get like you only a get like 50 percent or 75 50 percent or, or 75 percent of your pay for August and sometimes they'll try to rope you into working and that Depends that just kills you it are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended up having to work some of summer vacation because we had certain things that were going on and some sort of contest yeah. I remember that um so that is the teaching stuff public school if you work in the preschool or the private sector, you might not even get that much vacation. Yeah, um, it's totally random because, based on the company. Yeah, it depends on the company. So I had less vacation time when I was working in the public sector compared to the private, or uh, other way around, yeah. other way around. So when I was a public teacher, I got lots of time. When I was a private teacher, I didn't get as much time. But it was still okay. And then, yeah, they were fine. Uh, yeah. and now they, they were better than America. <laughs> Well, maybe well, not for teachers. Not, yeah, not I never, I never worked a, a teacher one. Yeah. But now that I don't work in the teaching realm, I get. She works in an office, basically. Yeah, now, I work so. at a Japanese company. I get about, I get all public holidays off, so that is a lot of three-day weekends and random days in the middle of the week. But I also get, I started with ten days of holiday, and I've now built up to about twelve days of holiday that I can take any time that I want. And if I end up working overtime on the weekends, those days accrue into days that I can take off as well. So you this have, year you have I have really like busy summers. 13 days. Yeah, I have super busy summers. So, and, and not such busy winters. So that's how we're able to, that's why we take a trip every winter mm. is because she accrues all this time during the summertime and then can take that time off in the winter. Yeah, so that just toss them all together and that gets us a, a pretty big vacation. And this is something that like she gets, but this is not typical of like Japanese companies. This is a little bit special. Like if you're trying to gauge, like, oh, how much time do Japanese people get off? Like, it's not... I don't really even know. They've all got different contracts. Yeah. <laughs> and they, even, the, even the Japanese people at my company, I don't know if they have the same vacation situation that I have. I have no idea. <laughs> and I don't think they want you to really know. <laughs> so, Fair enough. Yeah. 
there are a bunch of people walking by in costumes Maybe right now, collecting trash. And I just think that, um, yeah, all those people are. <laughs> I'm just watching the screen yeah. so that I can see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> they're, all, they're all just, they're collecting the trash. That's really nice of them. Well, that is cosplay clean. <laughs> yeah. I guess. All right, well, bye guys. <laughs> see you later. Seriously love Japan. You can leave your phone in the toilet and then the next day you can pick it up. Or even two days later. Or even two days later. <laughs> it wasn't in the toilet though. <laughs> I hope not.